Welcome to The Read Along. A mini book club for your ears. I'm your host, Scott. I'm your other host, Anita. And join us on a journey through a good book, one one chapter chapter at a time. time. Do you like talking about movies? Do you like talking about mediocre movies? Do you like talking about how you could have fixed mediocre movies? Well, I certainly do, and you can listen to me, Scott C. Bourgeois, along with my co-hosts Greg Beaver and Liam Kreswick, as we give our notes, and I have some notes. You can follow it now on your podcatcher of choice, or support it by visiting patreon.com slash I have some notes. Happy belated Mother's Day. Thank you. To you and to anybody else who is a mother or a mother figure. To anybody who celebrates. I know that Mother's Day can be a little hard for a lot of people for myriad reasons. Mm -hmm. Same with Father's Day. But uh, if you are one of those people who needs a happy Mother's Day, happy Mother's Day. (laughs) Mine was lovely. I got a lot of uh, handmade cards and um, some flowers and a Vigi game. Because we're nerdy that way. Yeah. The new Zelda just came out, I'm just saying. And uh, yeah, it was nice. The appreciation from the kids was really sweet. Well, you're a good mom. So. I try, try. That happened. That was basically the weekend for the most part. Yeah, I was treated nice. We went out and treated our own mothers nicely. I think so. I hope so. I hope so too. Yeah. Don't know where I was going with that. Well, just it was relevant to when we were recording. Relevant to when we were recording. Don't really have much more to add. You know who else is a good mom? The queen. We don't know that for sure. I have no idea if she's a good mom or not. Can't confirm that or deny that. So we'll just, uh, on that note, go into a brief recap of our previous chapter, chapter four, in which we are introduced to Rosie, the assistant to the queen's secretary. Yeah. Sir Simon. Yes. And in updating Rosie, we get a rundown of suspects. Uh, Yeah, a little bit more information on what happened the night before the murder, I should specify, (laughs) uh, because it's been a little bit of time now. And uh, also a little bit more about Brodsky, the victim, and uh, yeah, a little bit more on possible suspects. And that leads us into Chapter 5 of The Winds Are Not by S.J. Bennett. So apparently Rosie does fill in the queen with this new tidbit, but it does not improve her mood. (laughs) Okay. So I was tired last night when I wrote my notes. And the first thing I wrote myself was, the queen is not amused. She wasn't. Yeah, she wasn't. No. Sir Simon is pleased at the very least that they've managed to kind of keep the majority of the scandal out of the papers. Yeah. The real truth isn't out there. Yeah. The news went out that someone died. Because, I mean, it's hard to hide that fact. Yes. But it was presented as, oh, like a really tragic accident. Like this is a thing that happened. Yeah, I believe the way that they actually kind of leak it is that someone unexpectedly died in the night. Yeah. The rumor went around that it was a heart attack and no one refuted that. And then the rumor further got a little more saucy that the heart attack had happened while someone was involved in an illicit affair. And it was just not believable enough that the mainstream press didn't pick up on it. So dodged a bullet there. Yeah. And like the tabloids ran with it. And of course, then they're just making weird stuff up. Right. And so everyone's like, okay, yeah, never mind. (laughs) Yeah. So it's mostly kind of blown over at that point. The problem is it hasn't actually been resolved there is no answer to what's going on yet well no (laughs) but the point is that they've kept it out of the public eye right they've avoided the scandal so that they can properly investigate but what i'm saying is that sir simon is frustrated that the investigation is still going on oh yes he'd like for this to have been wrapped up by now and indeed some of the top people are looking into it but nobody's got a satisfactory answer as yet. No, not it yet. Is, it remains a mystery what happened. So Yes. And that leads us to the Queen getting kind of an update from the people who are in charge of this investigation. Apparently, they've basically set up shop in the castle. Yeah. They overtook one of the towers? Yeah. They've got, like, whiteboards and, like, chicken <laughs> boards all set up. 
And they are trying to piece together what happened. The queen is informed that they'd like to give her a bit of an update. And she's like, well, I'm taking the dogs out for a walk. So if they're giving me an update right now, they're coming with me. Okay. I'm going to give props to the queen. I think it's actually very smart what she's done uh, by basically telling them, well, fine, give me the news. I'm walking the dogs. But what she's actually done is held a top secret meeting where they're very unlikely to be bugged. It's true. Or overheard or bothered, right? They're out on a walk. Yeah. The odds of staff overhearing them or them being spied on or like a listening device being in the garden, pretty slim. Yeah. So I, I don't know if she did it on purpose to just like not be interrupted or if it's on purpose to be clever, but either way. Uh, further to that, she's actually quite pleased with herself because she's told these three people who've been working tirelessly for days, or at least one and a half people who've been working tirelessly <laughs> for days that they need to get out and get some fresh air and maybe some sun. The one guy for sure yeah. needs needs some fresh air. That would be Detective Chief Inspector David Strong. Yes. He's the guy who's in charge of the investigation, more or less, like on the ground. And he's like not slept properly in days because he's been like fully elbow deep in trying to figure oh, out yeah. what's going he's, on. Oh yeah, he's tired, he's haggard, like bags under his eyes. He's kind of a mess. Yeah, the queen actually feels a little bad for him. <laughs> <laughs> she also feels a little bad for the commissioner of the Metropolitan Police, Ravi Singh. He's also obviously involved in the investigation. Yes. Um, they're the two kind of main law enforcement people, but there's also someone from intelligence who's involved. And this is the person the queen gets bad vibes from. She does not like this guy. He rubs her the wrong way. And this is the uh, director general of MI5, Gavin Humphreys. Oh, yes. Oh, and a correction. Uh, previously, I said that they'd be dealing with MI6 uh, because I was, very, I was very James Bonding at the moment. I was wrong. It's MI5. Yeah. MI5. Humphreys is like a pencil pusher, and he's very patronizing because he came up from like, I want to say like cybersecurity. Apparently, he recently became director general, and he beat out two other probably more qualified people because politics the way that the, of, the, way. the office politics got in the way, and he kind of came up the middle. And he presumes that because the queen is a woman in her 80s, that she's completely out of touch. And I mean, she's a royal, so that's probably fair. But she's not as out of touch as he seems to believe, especially in regards to technology and modern trends and stuff yeah she's not an idiot no she's not stupid and he kind of talks down to her in a way that she finds off-putting yeah also i don't think she has a lot of confidence in his competency no and that's pretty clear as well also he's the one of the three who doesn't seem particularly like stressed or frazzled Right? Like the other two look like they've been at work for the last few days trying to solve a mystery. Yeah, and this they've guy, clearly not slept. And, and this guy's like clean cut and he's just like... Well rested and fed. Yeah, and he's just like, <laughs> I already know what's happened. Yeah, he's made assumptions and filled in some blanks and is really confident in what he thinks happened. Yeah. Uh, I think it's Singh who says like, I, I w it was a tough sell, but the motivation is strong. Yeah. Right? So he's really only got... Sorry, Humphreys really only has one strong facet yeah. he's, to this. He's got a theory, and the fact is the police don't have a better working theory at this time. So they're kind of going with his reluctantly. Yeah. His theory is that this was a political assassination. Yes. That it was done by, and Humphreys is fully in the accusing parlor here, Vladimir Putin. Yep. Okay, so let's fill it in a little bit. Yeah. It turns out that Brodsky was very anti-Putin yeah, like, and, and like vocal about it. They found evidence to suggest that he was actually the person behind a blog that was vocally anti-Putin and, and was chronicling a lot of the murders of journalists that have gone on in, in Russia and yes. such. The belief is that, or at least Humphrey's belief, is that Putin had, I guess, a mole or a spy set up at Windsor Castle. And when Brodsky was there, it presented an opportunity for him to bump off a, a political opponent, basically. Yeah. And send a message to the UK at the same time. We can get anyone anywhere. Yeah. No one is safe. The Queen isn't buying. No, not really. You can tell. Yeah. She doesn't say it outright. No. But you can just tell. And while the police are also like, eh, it's it's plausible. It's something that has been done in the past, obviously. 
Putin has struck at enemies in other countries. We know that. It's a matter of history. But it seems very brazen to do it in the Queen's house. Right? Right? And the thing that is kind of tripping me up with the theory, and the thing that kind of made me go, mm, I'm not certain if this is entirely something that I would buy, is Humphrey saying that Putin was trying to send a message. But if he was trying to send a message, why would his assassin have been making it look like an accident? If you're sending a message, you send, send a mess. message. You don't try to hide the message. That's an excellent point. Yeah, that's the thing that kind of made me go, is he sending a message if he's making it look like autoerotic asphyxiation? Right? Yeah, that seems to me like somebody trying to hide a crime, not trying to rub it in somebody's face. That all said, despite my misgivings, um, that's not to say it couldn't have been a political assassination or politically motivated. And Humphreys even circles back to a piece of information that we did learn last chapter, which was that Brodsky was seen in a place he should not have been around 2 a.m., before yes. the murder but after the party. So it's possible he was meeting up with someone. And that's certainly the uh, assumption that uh, that Humphreys is working on, that yeah. he maybe was trying to have some sort of rendezvous, either had had the rendezvous or got caught before he had the rendezvous and was sent back inside. And that that may have been him rendezvousing with whatever spy is set up at the castle. Right? Yeah. I think you're right, though. A, it doesn't really send a message because he's trying to hide it, unless it's like a secret message for for their agents, but that seems silly to it's me. It's weird, yeah. Also, that feels like a lot of effort put in for a blogger. Yeah. Right? Like, he's not a top-level official that needs to die. He's a pianist who just doesn't like... Putin yeah, a, and is accusing him of killing journalists. Yeah, it's not like he's writing exposés on the corruption in Russia. He's just writing critical blogs and bringing up the fact that journalists have been targeted. Right? I I don't think that puts him right at the top of the enemies list. No. You know? He seems he certainly comes across as small potatoes. Yes. Like, he's not an enemy of the state. He's, j like, a nuisance at best. Why would you risk exposing a plant in a foreign country's house? Right? Not just government, but, like, the head of state's house. Yes. For someone who's not really that critical. I'm just saying, if he wanted to get Brodsky out of the way, there were probably cleaner ways of doing it. Yeah. Than hunting him down in Windsor Castle. Yeah, it seems very far-fetched. The more you think about Humphreys' theory, the more it kind of falls apart. Kind of? Like, it but seems... But we also know that he's probably wrong, based for the blurb, blurb on the book. Well, yeah. Right? Also, like, the queen isn't buying it. No. You can tell by the way the chapter is written. She doesn't even say anything. You know she doesn't buy it. No. She's very put off by how self-satisfied he is with this explanation. Yes. And she clearly is not eating it up. And ultimately is just like, well, the corgis are done. I'm heading back inside. Basically. After one of the corgis uh, shakes off a bunch of mud on Humphreys. Which so. she does not feel that bad about. No, she's actually quite amused. That dog's getting a treat back at the castle. <laughs> Guaranteed. <laughs> Good. It's still all very spy movie-esque. And I don't know if that's where the story is actually going to go. You you believe that communism may be a red herring? <laughs> I see what you did there. Yes. I mean, it's it's a little bit of a stretch because modern Russia is not a communist state anymore. But, no. but you believe that maybe we're getting all this spy stuff early on because it's trying to throw us off the scent of what really happened. That it yeah. might be something much more mundane than that. Yeah. I think it's probably a lot closer to home. I mean, yeah. What are the common motivations for murder? The common motivations are not political assassination. The common motivations are love, revenge, money. Yeah. Now, granted, Humphreys is suggesting here that Putin had him targeted for revenge. Yes. So there is that. I mean, and it's not entirely impossible, but I, uh, it still doesn't feel quite right. And there's so much money in the castle that night. Yeah. You've got both Matcha and Yuri who are involved in money. I mean, Charles wanted all these, like, rich Russians there. 
yeah. to like wine and dine them and rub shoulders with. So yeah, you've got Masha and Yuri. You've got this Jay Hacks guy who we know virtually nothing about. Uh, you've got Meredith, who's like a fading actress. She's probably got some money too. Eh. She seems more likely to have fallen in with the perhaps love motivation, if we suspect there might have been something scandalous going on there. Frankly, same with Masha. Yeah. She'd probably fall more in with a scandalous love affair. But like, there's money in play, and money's a strong motivator. Very and this so. is a guy who we know had some kind of sugar daddy supporting him for years. Yep. So uh. m- I, I'd say money is much more likely to be tied up in his murder. Yeah, probably. And that's a probably. lot more mundane than I'm putting out a hit on, on somebody a, who's been writing blogs about me. On a blogger in the UK. Yeah. Like, it's just, yeah, it just doesn't, it doesn't sit right with me either. Yeah, I mean, we're in chapter five. We haven't oh, yeah. solved the mystery There's yet. so, <laughs> there's so much more book left to, to, un, to unpack, Yeah, right? But it's just interesting to me that this, on the one hand, is a plausible explanation for what happened, but... It doesn't take much for even a bunch of amateur yo-yos like us to scratch <laughs> at it and go, no, this isn't Hold making on. sense. Something, something doesn't line up quite right. Something's not right here. So this leads me to the belief that the queen is going to find something that MI5 didn't. She, that, that has to be it. She has to be able to add something to this that they haven't discovered. Right? Possibly. So she is going to figure something out that they didn't or find something that they didn't. A piece of evidence, who knows, a bit of information. Or something that they discounted as unimportant. Yeah. Yeah. And the queen's going to figure it out. And it's going to be cool. Well, we've got many chapters left for that to happen. Yes, indeed. I don't think we got enough on anybody who's a plausible suspect to make any strong accusations this chapter. But I think it's safe to say neither of us are going into the accusing parlor (laughs) to sincerely accuse Vladimir (laughs) Putin of having masterminded this murder. Yeah. No, that feels a little too... A little too much. Yeah. A so. little too much. So we'll we'll wrap it up there, uh, I think, for today. We'll just leave Putin out of this. Yeah. We'll uh, want to read up on Chapter 6 in time for next week. In the meantime, of course, you can always hit us up on whatever podcatcher you're catching the pod on. Give us a little rating and a review. That definitely helps us out. And we would appreciate it. Yeah. You can also send us missives via social media. <laughs> Absolutely. We are on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and Goodreads. We are at the read along on most of those to be to make ourselves easy to find. Indeed. Uh, you can also send us an email. Yes. Scott promises to check it. It's the read along at gmail.com. And with that said, as always, we love you very much and we'll see you next time. I really like this version of the Queen. Thank you for joining us on The Read Along with your hosts, Anita and Scott Bourgeois. All Read Along music is by Kevin McLeod at Incompetech.com. Cover art is by Aaron Beaver. Be sure to join us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at The Read Along, and check out our group on Goodreads.com. Thank you.